Hey guys, welcome to chapter 7, topic 4. This is the last on a really big top or last topic in a really big chapter. So hopefully this will be a little bit of an easy topic for you. This topic is important because we've already talked about how molecules are broken down from food so we can harvest energy. But if you think about it, a big part of the cell's functions is building up items, replacing uh, ribosomes that are broken or filling in the cell membrane or when we get ready for cell division creating double of everything including DNA. So it's really important that we understand how the cell is capable of doing this. So first we got to define what anabolism is. Anabolis anabolism is the is also called biosynthesis and you'll see that term used a lot more than anabolic processes. Cells can create all four of the large biological molecules, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. They need to make all of these. They, the production is limited to the nutrients that are available, however. So if something is missing, the cell will actually break down parts of itself to harvest nutrients that it needs to build up molecules. So it's really important that the cell be exposed to all the nutrients that it needs. And we've talked about all those different nutrients at the beginning of chapter six. One of the other aspects of this is that autotrophs can use the sun's energy to build all the molecules they need. They don't need to go outside of it. That's why they're called autotrophs. So remember that. The production limitation is usually referring to heterotrophs, but if an autotroph is in a location where it doesn't get enough sunlight or doesn't have any carbon, it can't build these molecules. So first let's talk about carbohydrate biosynthesis. As you can tell from the catabolism chapter, or topic, glucose is a major important molecule in the cell. Glucose is important for biosynthesis of all carbohydrates, it's the building block for all of these and they'll be modified. But it can modify other carbohydrates if it needs to, but it prefers glucose. And, let, and carbohydrates are needed in the cell for cell walls because of the glycoproteins, glycolipids that are added to the cell wall, even though they're not the main component of the cell wall. Energy storage, sugar groups on nucleic acids. Remember, nucleic acids have three parts, the sugar, the phosphate, and the nitrogenous base. So if we want to make that sugar group, we're going to need carbohydrates. In microbes, it's really important for capsules, for the glycocalyx, because that is all uh, carbohydrate, and then cell receptors and markers. So as you can see, carbohydrates play a really big role within the cell, so it's really important that the cell be able to manufacture these components it needs. Another big one is protein synthesis. As you remember, proteins make up 50% of the dry mass of the cell. So this means that the cell needs a lot of proteins. More importantly, it needs to be able to replace proteins that are over or that are done being used or are broken or need to be replaced. So these proteins, um, main ones that we talk about a lot in this class are enzymes and membrane channels slash receptors. And these are the two main classes that have to be replaced. But there's a ton of different proteins, so it's really important that you make sure you understand that this biosynthesis of proteins is huge. And some organisms can manufacture all of the amino acids, while others have to ingest some of those amino acids. We talked about this a little bit in class, where we have essential amino acids that we have to eat because we can't create all 20 amino acids, while some organisms can create all of these amino acids so they don't need to worry about it too much. So the last thing for this topic is amphibolism. This is the term that is used to describe all of the pathways of metabolism in the cell. This is a combination of anabolic pathways and catabolic pathways. And as you can see from this picture, and I don't expect you to know the whole picture or be able to recreate it or anything, I just want you to be able to understand that the cell has the ability to stop processes from where it needs to be. So if a carbohydrate comes into the cell and starts going through the catabolic processes, and then all of a sudden the cell decides it needs it to build something else, it can stop the process and redirect that molecule to another source. So it's a really an ever going or an ever ongoing balance within the cell because the cell is beyond anything else frugal. It doesn't like to waste supplies, doesn't like to waste reactants, doesn't like to waste energy. If it doesn't need energy, it's not going to break something down for energy. Instead, it's going to use it to build other building blocks it needs. So just be aware of this, that it's a very delicate balance within the cell. So lastly, with this amphibolism, the, the anabolism, Let's review a few key terms. Anabolism builds the components of the cell, while catabolism provides energy and building blocks from, for breaking down molecules that can be used later in anabolic processes. 
And both processes happen continuously, assuming that the cell is in an optimal environment. If the cell doesn't have enough nutrients, it's obviously not going to be performing catabolism. And then once we have everything built up that we need, you'll see that the cell will undergo division, which produces enough macromolecules for two cells. Remember, a big part of this division means that DNA has to be replicated. All the DNA of the cell has to be duplicated in order to create two new cells. But another aspect of that is also the membrane of the cell. That has to double in size as well. So it's really important to recognize that it's this very delicate balance within the cell as far as assembly of the materials go. So this is the end of this really short topic. Please let me know if you have any questions, but I don't want you to stress too much over biosynthesis, biosynthesis because that's not the highlight of this chapter. The highlight of this chapter is really about how um, cells get energy from food molecules. So make sure you focus on that, but pay attention to this as well.